Hey guys, Crave the Lazy Geek here, and today I have a black box to review. It's actually an astrophotography camera. The camera is from Tobe Tech, the same maker that makes uh, my AMX571 sensor-based camera that I have attached to my Newtonian telescope here. And this time, the camera name is the ATR3 CMOS 08... Uh, 300 kpa another very simple to remember name top deck one day you will want to make like beautiful sounding names and what is special about this camera is that it comes with the sony imx 585 sensor which is a sensor that has been mostly for uh planetary imaging up to now but this camera is a cooled astrophotography camera for deep space and it's going to be great for nebula and all sorts of targets, but it's going to be awesome for things like planetary nebulae or galaxies. And we'll see why in a moment. Quick disclosure, I received this camera from TubeTech on loan. I have a few months to test it out and review it. I will be sending it back to them at the end of the review per period. So in this massive, beautiful ma box, we have the actual camera proper. We have uh, the power adapter for the camera if you're going to use it. It's always nice that it's included. We have the USB 3 cable for it. And we have uh, some adapters, including one adapter that makes the camera have a back focus of 12.5 millimeters instead of the usual 17.5 millimeters. The camera, by the way, it's uh, still more of a prototype. It's not, it doesn't have any sales page yet. It's going to come soon. Once it becomes available, I'll put links down in the description so you can have a look. The other Tobe Tech cameras that I bought, I personally bought uh, out of AliExpress. And of course, Tobe Tech has a range of partners that do rebrands of the camera. So it's going to be available under a variety of brand names as well, or so I would assume. So what is so special with this camera? Well, I used it, I tested it. I also did some sharp cap sensor analysis on it. We'll have a look at all of those results, but I see it as an alternative maybe even a successor to a camera like the uh, ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. So let's go into the details. The camera itself, it's a color camera, one-shot color camera. The sensor is the IMX585, which is a slightly smaller sensor than the IMX533 uh, that is in the 533MC Pro from ZWO and other companies as well. The camera, as you can tell from its size and the, the fins on the side as well, it is a Peltier cooled camera. So it can cool your sensor up to, I think, 35 degrees below ambient. Although I've managed to cool it more, the, the cooler does seem to work pretty well on those Tobe Tech cameras that I've reviewed. It's exactly the same form factor, the same shape, the same size, even the same weight as the other Tobe Tech cameras that I have. So they're basically reusing their platform, which is great. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The camera, because it's reusing the platform, has all of the nice quality of life, life features. We have the USB 2 hub integrated in the camera. Perfect if you're using like a filter wheel or a focuser that you're connecting directly to the camera from. And it has the power input and the, it has the LEDs. The LEDs, they do create a lot of light. So if you're going to be using Hyperstar for this camera, you'll want to uh, basically tape over those LEDs. Otherwise, it looks like a, a gaping mouth from hell once you're imaging <laughs> with, uh, with the red light really uh, going out of the camera. With my Newtonian, it's absolutely not an issue. But this is exactly the same as my IMX571 camera. There's really nothing changed in terms of the the package, the size, etc., etc. Where the big difference is, is the sensor. The sensor here, I'm gonna say it over and over again, it's the MX585. What is so special about that sensor? This sensor is one of the latest sensors from Sony. It doesn't have any amp glow, so you don't need to really take any dark frames. You can absolutely get by with just bias frames, flat frames, and light frames, obviously, for your imaging. So in that respect, it is far superior to something like the IMX183, which is in the ZW183 MC Pro. But what I really like about the sensor is the pixel size. The pixel size is 2.9 micrometers. So it is a smaller pixel size than the 571 
based camera, so this APS-C size sensor. So you will get a finer pixel scale, more resolution out of your images for the same optics. And because it is a small sensor, the camera itself should be, once it's released, fairly cheap. And with the, both the restricted field of view and the pixel size that is relatively small, which means you can really zoom into the details, it makes it perfect for planetary nebulae, for galaxies, but also for all sorts of other objects. But there is one more thing that I find absolutely incredible with this sensor. It is the dynamic range and the read noise. And it's very interesting because Tobtech has actually created three read modes with this camera. You have the typical ones, low conversion, low gain conversion or low conversion gain. You have the high conversion gain as well, which is something that we've seen with other cameras implemented differently depending on the camera maker. But this one also comes with an HDR read mode. And that HDR read mode provides both absolutely incredible read noise while at the same time providing above 14 stops of dynamic range. I'll get to that in a moment in the SharpCap sensor analysis. Before that, let me open up astronomy.tools so we can have a look at the field of view compared to something else like the 533 MC Pro or the 183 MC Pro. So here we have for my particular telescope, this Newtonian here with which has around 517 millimeters of focal length. Uh, the red square here is the field of view covered by this Taupe Tech camera. The uh, green field of view here is the 533 MC Pro from ZWO or any other camera that uses the same sensor. And then you have the yellow one, which is the uh, 183 MC Pro or any other camera using the same sensor. Now you can see that for the red, uh, uh, square, which corresponds to the uh, IMX585 sensor in the Tech camera. I actually used the template from Player One with Uranus Seed, and they also have a cooled astrophotography camera based on this sensor, the Uranus C Pro. But that Uranus C Pro from Player One doesn't seem to have an HDR mode, which makes a big difference. And again, I'll get to that in a moment. That said, we can see that in terms of the field of use, we're seeing that the 533MC Pro is basically an IMAX version of the Tech camera with the uh, IMX585 sensor. The IMAX, IMX585 sensor is basically the normal cinema screen. And then the 533MC Pro, you just like get, get more field of view like vertically in there. And the uh, 183 MM or MC Pro is basically a bigger version of the Tope Tech camera. So you can see you have, this is a drawback, but you have a tighter field of view. At the same time, you have a resolution with this particular uh, setup of 1.16 arc seconds per pixel versus uh, what I would normally get with the 533 or even the 571 sensors, which is 1.5 arc seconds per pixel. It's not that big of, the, of a difference, but still it will make a difference on planetary nebulae, on galaxies, especially if you want to do like some kind of lucky imaging on very bright planetaries or very bright galaxies as well. Now let's have a look at the sensor analysis from SharpCap. And as I mentioned, there are three read modes. We have low conversion gain or low gain conversion. I never know the order of the words, high gain conversion and HDR. And HDR is the setting that I see available for the play, for the uh, Tope Tech camera, but not for the player one camera. I hope that player one can actually add that mode to their uh, Uranus C Pro camera, uh, so we can take advantage of that. Otherwise, right now, Tope Tech definitely has a leg up in that respect. Here we have the low conversion gain. Honestly, this is not a mode that I would ever be using. You get a really high read noise of around like 5.5 at, uh, at the starting gain value with a full well depth of around 40,000, which is actually pretty good in terms of full well depth. And you have a dynamic range of almost 13 stops. So this is decent, but the read noise is too, is honestly, to my taste, a bit too high. So if you were using that mode, you'd probably want to go to maybe uh, gain 1000 to have a lower read noise, but then you really sacrifice both the full well depths and the dynamic range. Then we have the high gain conversion mode. 
and we see something that is really good as well like gain at the gain 100 we have only 0 0.8 electrons of read noise I believe the IMX 571 or the IMX uh, 533, whenever you switch to the high conversion gain mode, you still have something like 1.5 electrons of read noise. So this is much lower, which is awesome. And it helps actually compensate for the lower pixel surface area that we get on each pixel due to the smaller pixel size, but also better resolution for the image. The full well uh, electron depth is then around 4000 only but you do have a dynamic range because of the very low read noise of 12 stops so you can really vary with just this high conversion gain mode you would be able to have short exposures or relatively short exposures even in very dark sites while still completely overwhelming the ridiculously low read noise so this is honestly really impressive but what really knocked my socks off is the hdr mode and this is, again, something I've seen only on the Tech camera. The drivers are still better. The uh, toggle for HDR is not available in Nina, even in the development versions as it is. Uh, it's only available in the ASCOM driver right now. So I use the ASCOM driver to measure this. And we see like the weirdest read noise curve ever with like some kind of a V shape, which is not something I ever see, which also means that you never ever want to use it above the gain value of 1000 in this case. But, actually you'd probably want to always use at least for deep sky photography you would want to always use this camera in hdr mode at gain 100 because then we have a ridiculously low read noise of 0 0.64 so even better than the uh, height conversion gain modes. And we still have a decent full well depth here of 13,000 above 13,000 electrons which lets us achieve, so the comb combination of a de decent full well depth together with a really low read noise gives us a dynamic range of above 14 stops. This is better than the MX571 in any of its settings. It's better than the 533 sensor as well in any of, the, of its settings. It's amazing. I'm, all, I'm honestly like, this is kind of like the hidden feature that could make such a big difference because you have the you can expose for very long because you have the dynamic range to support that while at the same time you can support shorter exposures because of the super low read noise so you have, really have the freedom to choose there and in places like tokyo well i can go with really really short exposures and do effectively almost like lucky imaging while still completely overwhelming the super low read noise so it really gives a lot of freedom to the imager, but at the same time, you don't really have to be, if you don't want that freedom, if you just want to have like a single value that works all of the time, you just put it HDR mode, gain 100, offset maybe like 50, and exposure time, depending on your light pollution. But here in Tokyo, uh, I was doing narrowband with two minute long exposures on M27. It worked really well. And for broadband, I'd probably go with like 10 second exposures. And because the file si sizes and the number of pixels is pretty low, it's less than nine megapixels as I remember it. The stacking can be very fast, especially with the latest version of PixInsight that supports fast integration stacking. Anyway, let's also have a look at the results that I had with this camera on the M27 Dumbbell Nebula. I already had a couple of hours in between two typhoons. There's a, another typhoon that's just like passing to the to the west of here but i still had two hours and i want to show you the results so first this is the a single frame on m27 120 seconds and you can see that uh this is without flats just bias calibrated no, no other form of calibration it looks good there's no m glow whatsoever it's flat as heck it's beautiful and i can see already this is a single two minute exposure from tokyo quite a lot of detail in there and if we look at the stack of less than two hours, actually, the less than two hour stack on M27 with 120 second exposures from Tokyo through a four nanometer bandpass dual band narrow band filter, this is the result that we got on M27. I love this. This, this thing, it's a cheap alternative or hopefully cheap alternative uh, to things like the IMX 533 or the IMX 183, definitely more advanced than either of them. If 
Sony made an APS-C size version of this sensor. This would be absolutely incredible. It's already amazing as it is. And because most amateur astrophotographers start with small telescopes, this pixel size is perfect to take advantage of that, 2.9 micrometers. So as you can tell, I'm quite impressed by this camera. I will keep using it going forward. I mean, I'm a long time uh, Taupe Tech uh, user and Ryzen Cam user as well, which is basically the same thing. So I like the form factor. I like the cooling. The platform is the same as always. The only difference is the sensor and how they manage to use to have this readout mode of HDR that seems to be absolutely amazing. And I'm really hoping that other manufacturers take note of this and make cooled astrophotography cameras based on this sensor. We have uncooled on the market. We have another maker that has a cooled camera. Maybe others that I'm not aware of. Please let me know and let us know down in the comments. And while you're going there, like the video, subscribe to the channel, in which case, welcome to the channel. Click that bell, bell icon as well, very important. If you're feeling like supporting my endeavors even more, you can join the channel as a member or even better join my Patreon link down below. But overall, I'm so hyped to see this sensor technology uh, like getting better and better, making its way into cameras, how long until we have like negligible read noise, which will be absolutely incredible. I am so hyped, technology plus astrography. What's to dislike in there? It's awesome. But anyway, I'm getting a bit overexcited. I still need to do more tests on the camera. Anyway, more important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.